This is the Bundy Ranch. Uh, Clive and Bundy has been living here all of his life. His family settled this ranch back in the 1870s. That because of an agreement that the federal government made with ranchers at the time. Now, this was long before any federal bureaucracy existed like the EPA or the BLM. What was free and open land at the time now seems to be burdened with federal government regulations and federal government bureaucrats and a bit of a question about who actually owns the land, which is where Clive and Bundy and his family come in. Yeah, it gets back to the ownership of this. Who owns this land? Does Nevada own? Let me put it this way. Does the sovereign state of Nevada own this land within their borders? Now, the Bundy Ranch is now one of the largest standing cattle ranches in Nevada. Clark County is where it's located. That's just northeast of Las Vegas. According to sources in the area, Clark County ranching has been pretty much driven out of existence because of, well, the BLM, the EPA, and environmental groups. Now, one of the questions I repeatedly get on my radio show and in person is, but doesn't Mr. Cliven Monday own the federal government money for grazing fees on this land? Isn't this what this is all about? His daughter uh, wrote a sizable uh, history of the ranch and ran it down from where it started and how it was passed down and so on okay. and so forth. Very interesting and very has very much to do with the situation there and why they're fighting the way that they're fighting for their for their freedom and their rights. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. Thanks. Does she get in at all to how the Fed showed up? Because, I mean, that to me it seemed like the you know it was – uh, state land, and the feds just showed up and claimed it at some point. Yeah, this is a part of what she wrote about. Her name is Sherry Bundy Cox, and this is part of what that's why I say need to read it because okay. that's a part a, a part of it. And yeah, they just showed up, you know, one day and said, you know, well, we're going to manage this. And and originally, it, it was uh, the way it was presented to them. Uh, makes it very interesting. And that's what's at issue here. Is this, in fact, federal land, or is this county land? And just exactly who does Mr. Bundy owe his taxes to? He's more than willing to pay. If the United States owns this land, then I guess I'm wrong. But what if this is a sovereign state of Nevada, and the Clark County, Nevada, owns this land? The, the people of Clark County, Nevada, owns this land. That's that's the question here. And then they then they they said, well, you're trespassing. It, Bundy's a trespasser. He's getting something for free. He's on our land. Well, whose land am I on? And so that's where the court case stems from. Now, what about this uh, turtle you've been hearing about? According to environmentalists, the turtle and the cattle can't live together because, in fact, they both eat the same thing. So the cattle, which are not indigenous to the area, would drive the turtle to extinction. To that, Cliven says. Well, you know, it, it started 20 years ago when they got rid of all my 54 or 52 ranchers here in Clark County. The tortoise was the reason for that. And what they said is the tortoise needed more habitat, so they got rid of the cattle because the tortoise and cattle eat the same thing. Well, that's true, but there was no scientific uh, uh, proof that the tortoise and the, and the cattle had any uh, conflict and interest. If you look up how many acres or sections of ground he's running on to how many cows mm -hmm. and to how big that turtle is, Yeah, the amount of grass he's running on is huge. There's something else I wonder. The, the size of the turtle. Well, not being a cattle guy, I don't know. But maybe you know, someone like you can help out or somebody else who's in the industry would know. Okay, so they both eat the same stuff, we're told. But doesn't is, is the cow reaching down that far? I mean, isn't the level of what the turtle is eating a lot lower than what the cow is eating? Well, you know, when you stop and think about it, that way it kind of goes back to uh, the cattle and the sheep. The sheep yeah. will graze stuff a lot closer, and I'm sure that, like you said, that turtle's going to graze stuff a lot closer than that cow does. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, they need to have an actual environmental study that shows that the turtle or the cow is killing the turtle off. How do we know it's not the other way around? What if the turtles are killing the cows off? Then the question has been brought up, so what is this really all about? I mean, is the federal government just after land resources, perhaps there's something under the land that the federal government really wants to go after? Is this really about the turtle? Now, we could follow the money on this issue, and if you're curious as to find out what the federal government is really up to, I understand your curiosity. Personally, to me, that's not even the issue here. 
issue one, who really does own the federal land? And if it turns out that Cliven runs every possibility in court out to, he cannot even go to a higher court, and it's been settled, in fact, he does owe the federal government money, well, to that, Mr. Bundy says. I would be happy to pay a grazing fee to the proper form of government if I owed it. Okay, so those are the legal issues that we have to deal with. Now, what about what's happening right now with the protesters? I suppose by now you've all seen this video here. More protesters are arriving on the scene. Unfortunately, some of these protesters, well, they look like this. Clive and Bundy and his family has asked if you're going to join them, and by all means they need as many people down there as possible, that you don't show up looking like this. Uh, yeah, this is Shannon Bushman. I'm from Utah, and I was oh. down at the Bunkerville protest yesterday. You know, and, and frankly, i got to tell you, I'm a little disappointed the way people are physically responding to this. Right. The only thing that Bundy's asked is people to show up, and there were only right. a couple hundred of us there yesterday. Well, and they asked people, and I was talking about this last half hour, uh, please do not show up in camouflage and oh, you know, yeah, waving no. stuff around. You know, no, and no guns, no camel. This that's is a right. very peaceful You thing know, we can't happens. leave this issue without asking the question, where's the governor in all of this? I mean, isn't the governor of a state supposed to be protecting his people against something like that? Where's the county sheriff? So, in other words, just wagging your finger or sending a nasty letter isn't really defending the people of your community the people that these elected officials swore to protect and defend. What's happening right now at the Bundy Ranch is far from over. I've covered some stories over the past few weeks in dealing with the EPA in Wyoming. Every day that they deem I'm out of compliance is $75,000 a day plus criminal, civil charges, and the list goes on and on and on. And many other stories just like this from around the country. Yes, the federal government is too big and way too out of control. The best way to handle them at this point, if we can't win in court and it doesn't look like people like Clive can, instead we win in the court of public opinion. That's why you show up to events dressed like this and not like this. And that's why you make sure you carry your cell phone or any other video recording device. And if you don't have a YouTube page like I do, get one. And be sure to continue tuning into my radio show for updates on this and other stories about federal government overreach.